Today, I'm gonna to give you guys a rundown on my newly acquired desk. I've been spending a lot more time on my desk lately due to COVID-19 and all, and I wanted to spruce it up a bit. I wanted to make my desk cleaner with more of a minimalist appearance. I wanted to improve the ergonomics and I wanted to improve the aesthetics as well, all while keeping it reasonably affordable. So I scoured the internet, hoping to find the perfect desk that would match my criteria, but I couldn't quite find anything, within budget anyway. So that's when I decided, I'll just make my own. I'll get into how much all of this cost at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. But first and foremost, having a clean, minimalist look with functional ergonomics were two of my biggest challenges. To tackle two of these very important criteria, I decided that all of the usual desktop clutter that's on the desk needs to be underneath the desk, out of sight. But I didn't want to be reaching underneath the desk and bending over and trying to get underneath it to access my stuff. So to maintain functional ergonomics, I decided to create a pass-through flap so that I can easily reach all of the usual desktop stuff like the hard drives, the cables. I can even easily remove my laptop if I wanna go browse in the living room for a little bit. This flap is very easy to lift and it even has a soft close hinge which I found on Amazon for 25 bucks. Came with two of them. Cable management is paramount to maintaining a clean minimalist look. So I decided to make my shelf out of a wire rack that you would normally use in a closet. This thing only costs 25 bucks from Lowe's and it's quite sturdy. And it serves two very important purposes. First, it provides ample airflow to prevent anything from overheating down there. Safety first. And second, the plethora of cables under there can be intertwined throughout the metal rods of the wire rack, keeping all the cables tightly in place and organized. Speaking of cables, because both of our laptops and our monitor are relatively antiquated in the world of technology, they don't support Thunderbolt 3. That's a bit of a bummer because with a single Thunderbolt 3 cable, you can run power, display, and audio through just one cable. So I could eliminate many cables I have hidden away down there with that upgraded technology, but the stuff I have for now works just fine down the road as upgrades are required, I'll be looking to Thunderbolt 3, make this setup even cleaner. But luckily I was able to find this awesome power bar made by Echo Gear on Amazon. It was $40 and this thing is great. It's surge protected, safety first. It has six rotating heads, which can pivot about 180 degrees in either direction. So you can have full range access to every port on there. And it comes with also two USB power ports. I would have a lot less space down there if it wasn't for that thing. I'll post the link in the description uh, so you guys can check it out if you're interested. Having this hidden shelf underneath allows me to keep the desktop free of clutter which really minimizes distractions. I get distracted easily if I see something on the desk that I wanna play with or look at. It's, I'm gonna lose focus on whatever it is I'm, I'm working on. Being able to hide everything under the desk but still being able to reach it very easily is a dream come true. The only thing I have left on the desktop are the mouse and the keyboard, standard peripherals for operating a computer, which are on this nice, fake leather desktop mat. I don't even know what it's called. Just like a giant mouse pad for your keyboard and your mouse. It's very nice, very comfortable. And I'll post that in the description as well if you wanna check that out. And of course, a little plant in the corner there. That doesn't really distract me all that much. Brings a bit of life to the desk. I kind of like it. This is the Mateus wireless uh, backlit Bluetooth keyboard. I did a review on this. I'll post that in the, in on the video somewhere in the top of the screen. And this mouse, just picked this up off Amazon. My last one just died. Um, it's relatively inexpensive, I guess. It's $40. But what drew me to it was, it has USB type A connector, a USB type C connector, and it's also capable of connecting via Bluetooth. So there's three connection types. You're pretty much covered for anything, any computer you have. 
Um, and it's one of those ergonomic mouses. So it's kind of got like a vertical profile when you hold it. It's supposed to be better for your wrist and stuff. I've only been using it for a few days now. I think I'm gonna do a review on this. I kind of like it so far. So stay tuned, make sure you guys are subscribed if you wanna see that video. And if you guys are liking this video so far, hit the like button down below. Now, it wouldn't be a tech desk if it didn't come with wireless charging. There is nothing cooler than hidden wireless charging. I saw this in a video once and I said, you know what, that is so cool, I have to do that. So to make that happen, all I had to do was router out a hole underneath the tabletop, so it was only a thin piece of wood, install the charger. Actually, I had to jerry-rig the charger a little bit. I bought these wireless chargers off Amazon. Um, it was, they were $33 and I got two of them. One circle charging pad, and it, then it also came with a stand-up charger as well. So that's a pretty good deal. It'd be like 15 or 16 bucks each if, if you look at it that way. And they're both USB Type-C, so Gotta love USB Type-C. But anyway, I had to crack open this charger, take out the charging coil, paste it to the top of the charger, and then I put that charger up underneath into the hole that I created under the desk, and then taped it and kind of put a metal strapping wire across so it doesn't fall out. Um, that reduces the transmission distance, and I get a good solid connection every time I place my phone on the desk. And this is my first experience with a wireless charger and it is awesome. It is so much better than fiddling with a cable and trying to plug it into your phone. You just drop the phone on your desk and you're good to go. I think I'm gonna do a review on those wireless chargers as well. Um, so again, make sure you're subscribed, click the bell, and you'll catch that video when it comes out. I also put the wireless charger off to the side of the desk because it's out of my eye line when I'm working and if I get a silent notification or something, I'm not gonna get distracted and I can maintain focus. Now I didn't scratch up or put anything on the top of the desk so I could have a visual marker of where to place my phone. Because I used Naughty Pine for this project, um, that, I mean, that's a type of wood, not like the pine was misbehaving or anything. There actually happens to be a knot right where I routered out and placed the charger. So only I know where the charging is and it's super clean and it just adds to the badass factor crazy what I consider badass these days. Man, I've come a long way. And yes, this is a standing desk as well. I'm really pumped about that. I did want to improve the ergonomics. Stand-up desks are really, they're not hard to find, but they're expensive, right? And it's hard to find one that's gonna fit your needs that isn't 500 plus or even into the thousands of dollars for a really good one. Luckily, I was able to find these legs only. It doesn't come with a tabletop, which is perfect for my needs. They're motorized, it comes with the up and down switch, and you just put on any tabletop you want. Uh, you are restricted to 176 pounds of weight, but that's more than I'll ever need. The only thing, this is my first experience with a stand-up desk, uh, motorized stand-up desk, that is. The only thing I would recommend in the future, if you have the extra money in the budget, get one with memory. So you can just push a button and it'll go right to the height that you like to stand at or it'll go down to the height that you like to sit at. Uh, this doesn't have memory, it's only got the up and down arrows which you have to hold for about 10 to 15 seconds. It's not the end of the world. In the name of saving money, it's not really a complaint even. But if you do have the extra money, get the memory one. I'll post the link for these standing legs if you wanna check them out. I'm gonna post them in the description down below. And being a custom desk and everything, I was able to source out the exact size wood that I needed. It had to be a proper size. It had to fit in the corner that I have now, right? And that was a problem with a lot of the desks that I like, they're just too big. This is four feet, okay? It's four feet and it's 27 inches deep. So that's the good thing about custom. You can build them to the exact size you want. I did find the, uh, it's like, it's called a project panel. It's laminated knotty pine. And that was, that was about $30 for that. And then I did buy a one by six by 12 pine board as well. And that helps me out with the sides and some bracing for the shelf. The wood conditioner, the stain and the finish, the polyurethane finish to keep the desk protected. Those three items were $60. So grand total with the legs, 
the tabletop and the shelf and the hinges, pretty much everything, $444. Didn't seem like a lot to me because I was looking at desks closer to the $1,000 mark, so this kind of seems like a bargain, but if you're comparing it to Ikea desks, you know, it might seem a little bit expensive, right? But Ikea desks, they're not gonna be this cool. Without the standing legs, if you decide to do, you wanna do something like this and you don't need it to go up and down, then you can swap out the standing legs and just trade that in for four Ikea legs or five bucks each. So add on $20 and subtract those legs and the grand total comes out to $185 without the standing option. So that's actually really affordable. Um, that's in and around the neighborhood of the price I paid for my last Ikea desk. It's got that Alex drawer on the side and that Linmon cheap table with the two legs on the side. Uh, that was 160 bucks, so. Also, did I mention those standing legs? $230 just for the legs only. That's a really good price considering, as I mentioned before, most of the standing desks options are 500 plus into the thousands even for the good ones. For $230? for a motorized up and down uh, leg system. No tabletop, just the legs. Uh, that's pretty good. Especially Ikea sells one, it's a hand crank, and that's $235. Can't go wrong with these legs here. I'll post them in the description. You know, that monitor and the monitor stand, I've had those from my previous desk. That's a Vivo monitor stand. It even comes with the laptop option. You can have your laptop off to the side, which is how I set up on the previous, but I find I didn't use the uh, dual monitor all that much, maybe once in a while. So I decided to hide the laptop under the desk, keep it nice and clean, keep it looking minimal. Uh, oh, and I even got this desk lamp here too. This desk lamp comes just over the monitor uh, and you can tuck it away behind the monitor if you, want to, if you want it to look even cleaner. All right, so there we go. I think that's about it for this video now. I know this was a long one, I do apologize. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I'd also appreciate if you hit the like button down below and click subscribe and the bell for notifications for future videos. Okay, thank you guys, we'll see you in the next one.